Okay, so it's time to introduce the uh, database that we're going to use. Now there's lots of different ways that we could include data into our application. Um, I'm just going to take a real simple approach here. I'm not going to use a lot of the tools that are available to you in Visual Studio to uh, with persistence layers or anything like that. So uh, there's tools out there like in Hibernate or um, Entity Framework, and we're just going to do a pretty straight, simple MySQL database with uh, some code that will access that. Uh, the point of this exercise uh, and this tutorial is to teach you about REST. It's not to get into how the data is stored in the database. So we can save that for another time, and you may have different ways of doing it. And that's, that's one of the beauties of REST is once that we identify the interface and the resources that we're going to use, what happens, how we store those, and changing how we store those is easy because the interface still stays the same. So let's uh, go ahead and get started. We're going to start by adding a reference here to MySQL. So I've already installed the MySQL database for Windows, and I've also installed, let me just show you what I have here. So there is a, I'm going to bring up this MySQL installer, and it will show you what I have installed. You'll, you'll want to get both of these packages installed. Uh, so you'll need MySQL server, you'll need the SQL Workbench, which is a tool I'll show you here in just a minute, and then the connector.net is a set of libraries that allows you to talk to that database. Alright, so let's just introduce the database real quick. We'll, we'll run the MySQL Workbench. Give that a minute to start up. All right, so you'll, I'm going to show you the database structure that we're going to use. Uh, it, it maps pretty closely to the objects that we've created so far, the model. And that's this uh, table personnel, this table. And the columns look like this. There's an ID column, first name, last name, pay rate, start date, end date. So pretty, pretty simple stuff. And we're not going to do anything too complicated with joins or anything like that. We're just going to start out with this. So uh, the reason I bring this up is just to show you the structure of the database. And so let's do this. Let's go ahead and add a reference to the connector information. So over here if we type MySQL, once it's installed, MySQL data is what you need to uh, reference. So we'll go ahead and include that. Okay, the next thing that we're going to want to do is have some way to store this object or this model that we've created. And, and I'm just going to create a little persistence class that will do that. Again, there's, there's some maybe better ways to do this or simpler ways to do this. Uh, what I'm going to start with is by adding a new folder called app code. And if you've done much with ASP.NET, you, you know that that code is used typically for classes to be stored in. We don't want to put the persistence in the controller or the, or the model. So we'll create this app code folder. And, and uh, in the app code folder, I'm going to create a, a helper class called person persistence. So here we'll just add a new item. And this will be a class, and we'll just call it Person Persistence. Again, there are other ways to do this. So I'm just picking a real simple way to do it. And then opening that up, what we'll do is make sure that we are bringing in uh, MySQL data. So we've got that. Now, um, now we write some code, and this is going to be a little bit lengthy for me to walk through, but hopefully um, 
it's useful to you, maybe a bit of a review and how to use MySQL if you haven't used it before. By the way, the reason I'm using MySQL and not SQL Server or some other product like that is I'm going to be repeating these tutorials in other languages and on other operating systems. So I want to just be able to use a database that works across all of those and MySQL fits the bill for that. There's all, also uh, no SQL databases out there like MongoDB that you might consider using. We might take a look at uh, switching over to that at some point. So um, in our person persistence class we are going to create a private data member Let's see data dot we're going to bring in our client and what we're really looking for here is a connection we want to just have one connection that the whole class uses so uh, MySQL connection will fit the bill for that. All right, so we've got that. Let's see. Okay, so that resolved. Okay. And then uh, we'll create a constructor, right? So um, the, the, what, the, what the constructor will do is create a connection to our database. So that That'll be pretty nice. We won't have to continually mess around with trying to get a database connection. It'll all be done for us whenever we bring, uh, whenever we get an instance of this class. Now, there's some downsides that to that as well. Um, one of them being that exactly that that you're connecting to the database upon instantiating an object, and the the user of those that class may not know that. So. So what I'm doing right now is just setting up my connection string that I'm going to use. And um, if we were doing a remote server, the IP address would be different than this because we're on localhost. Um, it just resolves to 127.0.0.1. And then the UID or the user ID. I, have a, I had an account that I set up on the database called developer user. I gave it privileges to that database that we looked at. Um, and I'm going to show you the, the password to that. You normally don't want to store the passwords this way, but just for the sake of learning, we will do it this way. And that's the connection string that we're going to use. And then what we will do is do a try catch. So well, I always like to put all the code in here first before I do anything. We're going to catch a MySQL data MySQL client my MySQL exception. So that's a particular exception that comes from MySQL for us. That'll be our catch. And I've got that misspelled. I'm sure you noticed that. All right, and then the try, what we'll do is we'll set our private data member to a new A new connection and we will say that the connection string is, on that class is my connection string Type it over there and then we'll open it spell. Okay, so that gets our database open and ready to use. 
and we're going to start with writing some data to the database. So I'm going to create this new method that will return a long. Now the thing that it's going to return is the ID. Uh, our, I didn't point this out in the database, but the ID of the person is an auto number. It automatically um, it is automatically generated by the database, so we don't have to worry about that. But we want to know it usually, and so um, this will re this will actually do that for us. So we're going to create a SQL string, and this is where I was saying we're pretty basic here. Insert into table personnel the fields we want to insert, which are going to be first name, last name, pay rate, start date, end date. The values will be we're going to pass in an object to this, one of our model objects, and so it has a first name property on it. Up here we got person persistence. We want this to be person, not person persistence. That's why our intelligence was not telling us, and I think we're still not quite there yet. Hold on one moment. Doesn't know about person, so we can fix that. Well, we've included that as well, so now we can use that. We'll resolve here in just a minute. So, single quotes around these. The syntax can get a little bit tricky here, so be very careful. So our last name is the next field that we're going to do, and a single quote, comma. Now because this is numeric, we don't need to enclose this in quotes. Pay rate. All right, now we got to do some formatting on some dates here. So MySQL handles dates a little bit differently than you might be used to in Access or SQL Server. So we are going to go ahead and put those in. Those end up in single quotes. So person to save start date to string and when you do a to string you can format which is what we're going to do so y y y y dash m m for the month dash d d and we are going to carry along the time component even though we're probably not using that too much And that's how you do the whole getting the format of the date correct so that MySQL is happy with it. And I'm going to copy that because we, that's a lot of stuff to have to retype. So we'll grab all of that. 
Same thing, but end date, right? So we'll grab that. Put this in. You may not have known that the two string on the on the date time had the ability to format, but it does, which makes things very nice. And we'll finish that off with all right. Hopefully. And the reason this is complaining. Still, because of this. Okay, so that fixed that reference. All right, so there's our big string to actually add something to the database. I know this is going a little long, but we'll have we'll have data being saved shortly. So, SQL dot data SQL client. The command that we're going to use, MySQL command right here, is going to be a command which is equal to a new MySQL command passing SQL string and the connection, both of which we've already set up. And then we will just tell it to go ahead and execute query execute non-query, sorry. That says that we don't expect a res result. However, the command object, once it has executed, will contain the auto number ID field, which we want. So that is under the property last inserted ID. And then we will return the ID. Now we're probably going to want to put a try catch in here at some point and return a minus one or a zero or something like that. So um, hopefully, you know, my typing today is pretty bad, but hopefully that is, uh, it's just a few lines of code. I know it took quite a while to type. Okay, so um, that's, uh, that's our, our persistence. We will want to do something similar to go and get the person, but uh, we'll save that for the next, the next video. So I know this has run a little long, so we'll stop right here, and then we'll come back and continue on with getting the object to actually save to the database.